Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Have you ever wondered how businesses keep track of their finances? How do they know what they own, what they owe, and how much belongs to their owners? The answer lies in the balance sheet, one of the most essential financial statements used by businesses, investors, and banks. But what exactly is the balance sheet? What are its key components? How are they calculated, and why are they so important? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What is balance sheet? A balance sheet is a financial statement that shows a company's financial position at a specific moment in time, usually at the end of a month, quarter, or year. It provides a snapshot of everything the company owns, everything it owes, and what's left for the owners. In general, a balance sheet is divided into three main parts, assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. These three sections follow a simple equation, assets equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Please be aware that this equation must always balance, which is why it's called a balance sheet. Section 2. Key Components. Let's go through each of those three parts in detail. Part A. Assets. Assets represent everything a company owns that has economic value. These resources help businesses generate revenue and sustain operations. Assets are classified into two main types, Type 1. Current Assets. Current assets are highly liquid, meaning they can be converted into cash within one year. These assets are crucial for day-to-day -day business operations. Examples of current assets include the following, cash and cash equivalents, they are money that is readily available, including cash in hand, checking accounts, and highly liquid short-term investments like treasury bills. Accounts receivable, they are money owed to the company by customers for goods or services that have already been delivered. Companies expect to collect these payments in the near future. Inventory, they are products or raw materials that the company intends to sell. Businesses need to manage inventory efficiently to balance supply and demand. Prepaid expenses, they are payments made in advance for services such as rent, insurance, or subscriptions. These expenses are considered assets because they provide future economic benefits. Type 2. Fixed assets. Fixed assets, also called non-current assets, are resources that a company owns and uses for more than one year. These assets are essential for long-term operations. Examples of fixed assets include the following property, plant, and equipment, PPNE, they are physical, tangible assets such as land, buildings, machinery, and office equipment. These assets help businesses produce goods or provide services. Intangible assets, they are non-physical assets that have long-term value, such as patents, trademarks, copyrights, and brand reputation. These assets contribute to a company's competitive advantage. Long-term investments, they are stocks, bonds, or real estate held by the company as investments. Unlike short-term investments, these are not meant to be converted into cash quickly. Goodwill, they are the premium a company pays when acquiring another business, representing factors such as brand reputation, customer loyalty, and intellectual property. Part B. Liabilities. Liabilities represent a company's financial obligations. In other words, the debts and responsibilities that the company must repay in the future. Similar with assets, liabilities can also be classified into two categories based on their repayment timeline. Type 1. Current liabilities. Current liabilities are obligations that must be paid within one year. These are essential to track because they affect a company's short-term financial health and liquidity. Examples of current liabilities include, accounts payable, they are money the company owes to suppliers for goods or services received but not yet paid for. Short-term loans, they are loans or credit lines that are due within a year. Businesses use short-term financing to cover operational expenses. Accrued expenses, they are salaries, rent, utilities, and other expenses that have been incurred but not yet paid. These are obligations that the company must settle soon. Taxes payable, they are taxes the company owes to the government, such as income tax, sales tax, or payroll tax. Type 2. Long-term liabilities. Long-term liabilities are debts and obligations that extend beyond one year. These are typically used to finance long-term projects and expansion. Examples of long-term liabilities include, bank loans and bonds payable, they are money borrowed from financial institutions or raised through bond issuance to fund growth, acquisitions, or large projects. Deferred taxes, they are tax obligations that a company owes but has been allowed to defer to a future date. This often arises due to differences in tax accounting methods. Lease obligations, they are long-term rental agreements for buildings, equipment, or vehicles that businesses commit to for several years. Pension liabilities, they are money owed to employees as part of future retirement benefits. Companies that offer pension plans must account for these obligations. 
Please be aware that a company's liability structure affects its financial risk. Too much debt can lead to financial distress, while a well-managed liability structure helps businesses grow sustainably. Part C Owner's Equity Owner's equity represents the value left over after subtracting all liabilities from assets. It reflects the stake that the business owners or shareholders have in the company. Owner's equity is essential because it shows the net worth of the business and how much value the owners have after all debts are settled. Here are components of owner's equity, capital contributions, they are the money invested by business owners, partners, or shareholders to fund operations. In corporations, this includes common stock and preferred stock. Retained earnings, they are profits that the company keeps and reinvests into the business instead of distributing as dividends. High retained earnings indicate a company's ability to fund future growth. Dividends paid, they are the portion of earnings distributed to shareholders. When a company pays dividends, it reduces retained earnings. Treasury stock, they are shares that a company repurchases from the stock market. These shares are held by the company and not counted as outstanding stock. If a company has more liabilities than assets, the owner's equity may become negative, meaning the business is financially unstable. This situation is known as insolvency, which can lead to bankruptcy if not managed properly. Section 3. An Example. Imagine we're looking at the balance sheet of a company called Springfield Psychological Services at the end of 2004 and 2003. As you can see, by the end of 2004, their total assets was $89,329, total liabilities was $61,540, $11,540 plus $50,000, and total owner's equity was $27,789. Now, let's apply the balance sheet equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. 89,329 is equal to 61,540 plus 27,789. It balances perfectly. That's the key feature of a balance sheet, it must always add up correctly. Section 4. Importance. A balance sheet is more than just numbers, it's a critical tool for decision making. Different groups rely on it for different reasons, for investors, investors use the balance sheet to assess financial stability before deciding whether to invest. A company with strong assets and low debt is considered a safer investment, while one with high liabilities might be risky. For banks and lenders, banks check the balance sheet before approving business loans or credit lines. If a company has too much debt and not enough assets, banks may deny loans or charge higher interest rates. A strong balance sheet increases borrowing power. For business owners, owners and managers use the balance sheet to track financial health, control expenses, and make strategic decisions. If cash reserves are low, they might postpone expansion. If assets are growing, they might invest in new projects. For governments and regulators, tax authorities and regulators review balance sheets to ensure businesses comply with tax laws and financial regulations. Public companies must publish their balance sheets regularly to maintain transparency. Section 5. Summary. To sum up, the balance sheet provides a snapshot of a company's financial position by showing its assets, what it owns, liabilities, what it owes, and owner's equity, what remains for owners, ensuring they always balance with the equation assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Understanding the balance sheet is essential for making informed financial and business decisions. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.